became colorful, it became something that you remember. It was such a time. Yeah, the house would light up and the fires would burn and, and the atmosphere would change. And so uh, those particular moments are, are very uh, crystalline in my memory. But also I think because I was brought up in the city, because I was brought up in, in remote, somewhat misty Irish countryside, certain things are very, um, are very pinpointed in my memory. There's something about the color red in the Irish countryside. I, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you've seen that. I never really became that proficient in French, particularly with, with our, our first serious French tutor, who was called Mr. Rentry, and um, he, he demanded homework and that kind of thing. He was, he was the first one who really had some impact. I could get around him pretty easily, I suppose. Your voice is me a lot. But then, after my parents separated, um, my mother went to London. I, was, I, I went to the nuns in Montreal for a couple of years. Yes, I noticed you used the word that you let the nuns know in advance, that you were an atheist. Not that I knew not that long. I mean, the nuns would never have met one before. This, this, I met with a tremendous uh, round of applause, and I was really happy about that. <laughs> and then after that, I didn't, I wasn't really expected to know my catechism, which was a relief. If you can imagine. And had, had met him initially when she was 14 years old. Her father had a, an Italian restaurant in New York City. And she was uh, a dancer, a ballet dancer, studying with Benoshi. And, and eventually to, to be the youngest member of the ballet of the American Ballet Theater. And um, during the war, my grandfather's restaurant was a speakeasy. And famous people from Hollywood came, various luminaries. And my father um, came one evening, and my grandfather's practice was to have my, my mother come down and, and meet guests sometimes. And he met my mother and, and was sort of enchanted by her, and she told him that the, the only times that she was allowed to go to the ballet, um, she had to write a three page essay for her father. So she could only do that very rarely since so she was um, working all, all the time for the ballet. And he said, well, I'll, I'll take you to the ballet and you won't have to write an essay. And he at the time um, was um, working for the War Department, um, making documentary films, or about to make documentary films for the War Department. But he was um, waiting for his orders uh, in New York, waiting to get his orders from Washington. And he arranged to hire a carriage, get her a corsage, and take her to the ballet. At least this is how he felt it later. <laughs> and, but at the last minute, was called away from war and unable to, to take her out. And um, so years hence, four years later, she had her photograph taken by Lee Paulson and been on the cover of Life magazine and was sitting at uh, David Selznick's table in Los Angeles when she was introduced to this uh, film director, John Houston. He said, we've never met before. And she said, oh, yes, but we have. And he stood me up once. <laughs> 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 